Stella? Hmm. Stella, my baby sister. Blanche, what's the matter with you? He's left. Stan? Yeah. Will he be back? He's gone to get the car greased. Why? Why? I've been half crazy, Stella. When I found out you'd been insane enough to come back in here after what happened, I started to rush in after you. I'm glad you didn't. What were you thinking of? Answer me. What? What? Please, Blanche, calm down and stop yelling. All right, Stella. I'll repeat the question quietly now. How could you come back in this place last night? Why, you must have slept with him. Blanche, you've forgotten how excitable you are. You're making way too much fuss about this. Am I? Yes, you are, Blanche. I know how it must have seemed to you, and I'm awfully sorry it had to happen, but it wasn't for anything as serious as you seem to take it. In the first place, when men are drinking and playing poker, anything can happen. It's always a power keg. He didn't know what he was doing. He was as good as a lamb, and when I came back, he was really, really very ashamed of himself. And that makes it all right? No, it isn't all right for anybody to make such a terrible row, but people do sometimes. Stanley's always smashed things. Why, on our wedding night, as soon as we came in here, he snatched off one of my slippers and rushed about play smashing the light bulbs with it. He did what? He smashed all the light bulbs with the heel of my slipper. Ha ha. And you, you wet him? Didn't run? Didn't scream? I was sort of thrilled by it. Eunice and you had breakfast? Do you suppose I wanted any breakfast? There's some coffee left on the stove. You're so matter-of-fact about it, Stella. What other can I be? He's taken the radio to get it fixed. It didn't land on the pavement, so only one tube was smashed. And you're standing there smiling. What do you want me to do? Pull yourself together and face the facts. What are they in your opinion? In my opinion? You're married to a madman. No! Yes, you are. Your fix is worse than mine is, only you're not being sensible about it. I'm going to do something, get a hold of myself, and make myself a new life. Yes? But you've given in, and that isn't right. You're not old. You can get out. I'm not in anything I want to get out of. What? Stella? I said I'm not in anything that I have desire to get out of. Look at the mess in this room, and those empty bottles. They went through two cases last night. He promised this morning that he was going to quit having these poker parties, but you know how long a promise is going to keep. Oh well, it's his pleasure. Like mine is movies and bridge. People have to get used to each other's habits, I guess. I don't understand you. I don't understand your indifference. Is this the Chinese philosophy you've cultivated? Is what... What? This shuffling about and mumbling, one tube smashed, beer bottles, mess in the kitchen, as if nothing out of the ordinary has happened. Are you deliberately shaking that thing in my face? No. Stop it. Let go of that broom. I won't have you cleaning up for him. Then who's going to do it? Are you? I? I? No, I didn't think so. Oh, if only my mind would function. We have to get a hold of some money. That's the way out. I guess that money is always nice to get a hold of. Listen to me, I have an idea of some kind. Do you remember Shemp Huntley? Of course you remember Shemp Huntley. I went out with him at college and wore his pin for a while. Well. Well? I ran into him last winter. You know I went to Miami during the Christmas holidays? No. Well, I did. I took the trip as an investment thinking I'd meet someone with a million dollars. Did you? Yes, I ran into Shemp Huntley. I ran to him on Biscayne Boulevard on Christmas Eve. About dusk, getting into his car, Cadillac convertible, must have been a block long. I think it would have been inconvenient in traffic. You've heard of oil wells? Yes, remotely. He has them all over Texas. Texas is literally spouting gold in his pockets. My, my. You know how indifferent I am to money. I think of money in terms of what it does for you, but he could do it. He could certainly do it. Do what, Blanche? Why, well, set us up in a shop. What kind of a shop? 
Oh, a shop of some kind. He could do it with half of what his wife throws away at the races. He's married? Honey, would I be here if he weren't married? How do I get Western Union? Operator, Western Union. That's a banana, honey. I can't dial, I'm just too... Just dial O. O? Yes, O for operator. Give me a pencil, where's the slip of paper? I've got to write it down first, the message I mean. Let me see now. Darling Shep, sister and I in desperate situation. I beg your pardon? Sister and I in desperate situation. We'll explain details later. Would you be interested in... Would you be interested in... You never get anywhere with the direct appeals. Huh, don't be so ridiculous, darling. But I'll think of something. I've got to think of something. Don't... Don't laugh at me, Stella. Please, please don't. I, I want you to look at the contents of my purse. Here's what's in it. 65 measly cents of coin of the realm. Stanley doesn't give me a regular allowance. He likes to pay the bills himself, but this morning he gave me $10 to smooth things over. You take five of it, Blanche, and I'll keep the rest. Oh, no, no, Stella. I know it helps your moral just having a little pocket money on you. No, thank you. I'll take to the streets. Talk sense. How did you happen to get so low on funds? Money just goes. It goes places. Sometime today I have to get a hold of a bromo. I'll fix you one now. Not yet. I've got to keep thinking. I wish you'd just let things go. At least for a while. Stella, I can't live with him. You can, he's your husband, but how could I stay here with him after last night with just those curtains between us? Blanche, you saw him at his worst last night. On the contrary, I saw him at his best. What such a man has to offer is an animal force, and he gave me a wonderful exhibition of that. But the only way to live with such a man is to go, go to bed with him, and that's your job, not mine. After you've rested a little, you'll see it's going to work out. You don't have to worry about anything while you're here. I mean, expenses. I have to plan for us both to get us both out. You take it for granted that I'm something that I want to get out of. I take it for granted that you still have sufficient memory of Bell Rev to find this place and these poker players impossible to live with. Well, you're taking entirely too much for granted. I can't believe you're in earnest. No. I understand how it happened. A little. You saw him in uniform, an officer, not here, but... I'm not sure it would have made any difference where I saw him. Now don't say it was one of those mysterious electric things between people. If you do, I'll laugh in your face. Go. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything more at all about it. Alright then. Don't. But there are things that happen between a man and a woman in the dark that sort of make everything else seem unimportant. What you were talking about is brutal desire, just desire. The name of that rattletrap street car that bangs through the quarter, up one old narrow street and down another. Haven't you ever ridden on that street car? It brought me here, where I'm not wanted and where I'm ashamed to be. Then don't you think your superior attitude is a bit out of place? I'm not being or feeling at all superior, Stella. Believe me, I'm not. It's just this. This is how I look at it. A man like that is someone to go out with once, twice, three times when the devil is in you, but live with, have a child by? I told you I love him. Then I tremble for you. I just tremble for you. I can't help your trembling if you insist on trembling. May I speak plainly? Yes, do. Go ahead, as plainly as you want to. Well, if you'll forgive me, he's common. Why, yes, I suppose he is. 
suppose, you can't have forgotten that much for bringing up Stella, that you just suppose that any part of a gentleman's in his nature, not one particle, no. Oh, if he was just ordinary, just plain, but good and wholesome, but no, there's something downright bestial about him. You're hating me saying this, aren't you? Go on and say it all, Blanche. He acts like an animal, has an animal's habits, eats like one, moves like one, talks like one. There's even something subhuman, something not quite to the stage of humanity yet. Yes, something ape-like about him, like one of those pictures I've seen in anthropological studies. Thousands and thousands of years have passed him right by, and there he is, Stanley Kowalski, survivor of the Stone Age, bearing the raw meat home from the kill in the jungle, and you, you here, waiting for him, maybe he'll strike you, or maybe he'll grunt and kiss you, that is, if kisses have been discovered yet. Night falls and the other apes gather. They're in the front of the cave, all grunting like him, and swilling and gnawing and hulking. His poker night, you call it, this party of apes, somebody growls. Some creature snatches at something. The fight is on. God, maybe we are a long way from being made in God's image, but Stella, my sister, there has been some progress since then. Such things as art, as poetry and music, some kinds of new light have come into the world since then. In some kinds of people, some tender feelings have had some little beginning that we have got to make grow and cling to and hold as our flag. In this dark march toward whatever it is we're approaching, don't, don't hang back with the brutes. Hey, Stella. Stanley. Stella. Hey, Stella. Hey, Blanche.